Hey everyone, Derek Gilman here, and today I'd like to discuss one of the more critical phases of cannabis processing, and that's the drying room. I maintain a small backyard boutique garden here in Ojai, California, and I do my drying here in my garage. I effectively convert my garage every fall into an ideal drying environment to maintain the utmost quality. It's not a commercial processing facility. This is what someone like you, who's maintaining an enthusiast backyard grow and trying to maintain the utmost in quality, could follow some of the techniques I'm gonna show you here today. So one of the first things I've done to convert my garage into a drying room is I've added these lines. I put this fine gauge wire and I've hooked them into these, uh, into these boards here, okay, to maintain strength and so they don't come popping out. Yes, there was a year when I put the hooks directly into the drywall, I filled my line, the line came crashing down. So as an evolution of my process, I now put them into these and I haven't lost a line since then. Okay? You'll see I have spacing between all the branches that I've hung here to maintain good airflow through the drying process. Okay? On that note of good airflow, I have six fans in this small garage, spinning the air from above top and down below. I don't have any of the fans blowing directly onto the drying branches. Instead, the fans circulate air below and above, and I even have a fan above us that sucks the air up. I track my harvest based on the variety of the plant, based on the plant number, if I have more than one plant of a given variety, and based on the harvest date. I use this tracking system all the way through my processing. So here on the wall, below each line, I have some tape and I've identified the strain first. In this case, this is M for magnum opus. I have a four, because it's plant number four. I had five magnum opus this year. And this was harvested on the 21st of September. So it's a very simple system that allows me to track everything through the process. Because when you grow from seed, you're going to find that there's going to be some variance from plant to plant. And it's nice to kind of identify those special individuals and keep them separated. All right? Another very important part of what I do here in this drying room is I maintain the humidity within a very narrow range. A lot of growers like to keep their drying room humidity levels in the low to mid 50% humidity. Personally, I have found the ideal range for me, for my quality and my grow, is 60 to 62%. And I'm able to maintain that very tight range of humidity in a couple of different ways. The first thing I've done is before I begin to harvest, I get my room set up. And that means sealing the room. I use Gorilla Tape to seal up all the seams. I seal up the seam around the garage door. I seal up any other entrances or windows to make sure to minimize the exchange of air. I don't seal it up 100% completely. I seal it up about 90 to 95%. Uh, in short, there's one of my dro entry doors that I leave open on the bottom to allow some slight exchange of air. Also, to maintain the humidity control in this narrow range in my room, I have a dehumidifier for those really moist days, and I have an industrial swamp cooler that I've installed as well for those super dry days. And I have each of these, so it's a push and pull system effectively. And I have both the dehumidifier and the swamp cooler hooked up to a hygrometer controlled power outlet. I'll show those to you right now because they're a very important part of what's going on here. So here we have my hygrometer switches. I have the swamp cooler hooked up to this one right here, and I have it set so that it doesn't get any drier than 60% humidity. If it hits 60% humidity, the swamp cooler kicks on and bumps it back up to 62. It's happening right now. You can see the little light is on. It's working its way back up to 62, and it's about to kick off. Down here, I have a hygrometer switch that I have hooked into my dehumidifier. And what it does is it doesn't allow the humidity to exceed 65%, okay? So my narrow range of humidity is effectively between 60 and 65%. 
with 62 really being in the sweet spot. Um, the reason I don't have the range set a little tighter is because I found these hygrometer switches, they're not exactly calibrated properly, and what happens is they can sometimes start battling each other. So that's why I allow a couple percentage points variance between the two and keep everything locked in this very narrow range, which again, in my experience, it's the perfect uh, humidity range for drying the cannabis prior to trimming. So even though all my neighbors are well aware that I cultivate for medical reasons, uh, I still like to minimize the impact uh, on my neighbors, and I also like to maintain a very discreet grow. So the last thing I'd like to show you here in my drying room is uh, odor control. And so I have a carbon-based filter that I use that truly works really, really well at controlling the odor uh, and keeping it from encroaching on the neighbors, from encroaching out into the street. So let me show you that to you right now. So here I have my carbon-based odor eliminator. Uh, this specific brand is a can light. Uh, I typically change out this filter once every season. It tends to get a bit sour if you use it for too long, kind of puts out this vinegar odor, but when they're nice and fresh, it eliminates the odors like nothing else. You can hardly even smell the odor in this room with all this cannabis right now. And you certainly can't smell it out beyond this garage door. So it's a fantastic uh, tool that I certainly recommend if you want to maintain your discretion in your uh, home-based grow. So on a final note, I just want to talk about timing in this room. From the time I chop the branches and bring them into the room, they stay in here into this conditioned environment for five days at which point they're ready to be trimmed. Until next time, I'm Derek Yeoman on The Grower's Quest.